Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 5th May 2018. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit or more importantly how it may help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, in today's topics, we will study oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. When the broad market goes up, many stocks go up with that. That is why we try to align our trades with the broad market. We keep an eye on broad market's direction using market breadth analysis of NASDAQ and NYSE and also technical analysis of the broad market ETFs. Other than aligning trades with broad market, we like to trade with the strength or weakness of an industry. We can identify that using industry rotation analysis. We will do that using QH industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum and look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. We will now move to live system. We are studying oil using the ETF USO. We are looking at it using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this at a glance template because it helps us decide if there is a low risk trade opportunity at the right edge of the chart usually in a few seconds. For last two weeks we had bullish color candles cyan colors in the weekly chart. However, both those weeks had long upper tails. That was mixed signal and we decided not to take any trade at that time. US oil was moving sideways during those days. This week also initially it was moving inside the range and on Friday it broke out of the range. It closed very near the upper boundary so we will not like to take any trend following swing long trade at this point. We may wait for US oil to pull back and then go up again giving us a proper go with flow trend following swing long trade opportunity. We are now looking at gold using the same at a glance template. We are using the GLD gold ETF. In last several market roundups, we observed that gold was moving sideways and without any clear trend, uptrend or downtrend and we decided not to take any trade, swing trade in gold at that point. This week gold went down, however there was no obvious trend following short opportunity. The first magenta candle that we had was at this point. However, it was still inside sideways range at that point. So we will not like to take any trend following short trade on this magenta candle. The next magenta candle came here. By that time gold was in clear downtrend however it 
came too close to the lower boundary. Therefore, the reward risk was not attractive and we would not like to take any short trade on this magenta candle as well. Last week I had mentioned gold was gapping up and down. Those are random movements and it is difficult to take swing trades during those days. The same gap up down moves continued this week. Out of the 5 trading days, 4 days had either gap up or gap down. This was Monday, we had a gap down day, Tuesday gap down day again, Wednesday didn't have any gap, Thursday had a gap up day and Friday had a gap down open again. Four of the five trading days had either gap up or gap down. These are random move areas and it is better to stay away from swing trades during these periods. The weekly candle is also very indecisive in shape. We may wait for better direction to appear before trying any swing trade on gold. Now we study the market breadth. Every week we study market breadth using NASDAQ Composite Index and NYSE Composite Index both using weekly charts. Because this is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval, this analysis is to be used for longer term investment decisions, not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. For two successive weeks, both for NASDAQ and NYSE, we have candles with long lower tails. That shows that initially price declined, however later on price recovered to close higher. On a closing basis, NYSE closed lower, whereas NASDAQ closed higher. NYSE changed color from green bullish color to yellow neutral color and NASDAQ did the opposite changed color from yellow neutral to green bullish color. Clearly NASDAQ is stronger this week. Still if we look from the right side the three successive weeks closed at around the same price level. That is not giving enough confidence to say that the market is clearly bullish. It is not bearish as well because we have two successive weeks with bullish shape candles. We may say that market is still not in any clear trend. If we look at the internals, the new high lows continue to remain muted. Earlier they were instrumental in moving the indices higher but for many weeks now they have not been instrumental anymore. The other four internals all went up and all closed comfortably above zero. NASDAQ internals made higher peaks than NYSE. Again showing that NASDAQ is stronger than NYSE. Though all the NYSE internals closed in the positive, the index itself closed down from previous week's close. That is sending mixed signals and it may be better to wait for clearer trend in the market. Let's see if the same hypothesis holds when we study the broad market ETFs. We are now looking at SPY using at a glance template. The memory support lines both in weekly as well as daily are very nicely supporting the price. 
Last week also SPY was inside triangle pattern and it is continuing to remain inside the triangle pattern. That is an indecisive market. Now if we look back then we see that the bullish headwind that appeared at the bottom here correctly predicted the low at that time. So far that low has not been breached. And if we see the other ETFs, we will see that the bullish headwind came at that time on multiple ETFs. In that market roundup, I had suggested that it may not go down easily. That turned out to be true. In the weekly, QQQ is bullish both in color and shape. The relative performance line is showing that QQQ is outperforming the market. QQQ was inside triangle pattern last week, however this week it has broken above the triangle pattern. Though it has broken above the memory resistance, it is still inside the watermark resistance level. It is not in clear uptrend right now, therefore we would not like to take any swing long trade in QQQ right now. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA using at a glance template. Daya also has two successive weeks with long lower tails. However, this week's candle color is still yellow. Like SPY, Daya continues to be inside the triangle pattern. There is no clear trend and we may wait for the triangle to be broken before considering next swing trade in Daya. IWM had been the strongest in terms of it being the only one that went above the yellow direction line in daily chart and so far mostly holding above that. However, IWM is also inside triangle pattern. Therefore, it has no clear direction and we will not take any swing trade in IWM right now. If we combine market breadth study with the broad market ETF study, we see that though the candle shapes in the weekly charts are bullish, the daily charts mostly are in sideways range. Inside triangle patterns, there is no clear trend and we have to conclude based on that that the market is neutral. It is neither bullish nor bearish right now. Let's see if the sector and industry analysis confirms that or it provides additional input to this hypothesis. Sector performance analysis. Every week we study 11 sectors across three review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week before the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks before the green bar. Together they constitute 4 weeks or about 1 month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line indicates the sector went up. Any bar coming to the left of the zero line indicates sector went down. We saw that market indices and ETFs recovered well from the week's lows. However, the sectors couldn't do that. Out of the 11 sectors, 8 declined showing that at sector level market is bearish and the declining sectors drop by more significant percentages than the advancing sectors. Real estate is the best performing sector went up by about 1.6 percentage whereas the worst performing sector telecom went down by around 4 percentage healthcare went down by around 3.5 percentage. Consumer staples, financials, industrials also declined by substantial percentages. What does it show? Going back to the market breadth study, if we look at advanced decline and up down volume, they closed comfortably above zero. Therefore, I cannot say 
based on data that more stocks went down it is not true in fact more stocks went up and they went up with higher volume larger stocks went up more and let me explain why i said that if we look at the market performance of this way we see qqq went up by 1.72 percentage whereas nasdaq composite went up but by relatively smaller percentage qqq has more large cap stocks than overall nasdaq composite index that shows that the gain was more concentrated on larger stocks the same can be observed from studying spy which went down by 0.2 percentage whereas NYSE composite went down by much larger percentage 0.8 percent showing that the bigger stocks in SPY limited the decline of the ETF whereas composite index declined more therefore in summary we can say that more stocks went up they went up with higher volume however larger stocks went up more than the smaller stocks the going up of larger stocks more than the smaller stocks was not enough to turn many sectors in the positive most of them closed in the negative utility sector had been one of the strongest in recent terms we can see that instantly from q edge sector hit map this is the only sector that is now up for all the three review periods the red green and blue all the bars are to the right of the zero line because it had been strong for quite a long time the best time to take a long position in this sector may have passed several utility industries are displaying deceleration and one may be cautious about existing long positions in them one may book profit or use q protection stop to protect profit real estate is the best performing sector this way looking back if we go through the previous market roundups we now see that using q edge in top down analysis we could identify some of the real estate stocks right at the point they were starting to go up in effect we could catch the turning around of several real estate industries from decline to advance let's drill down from the sectors to the industry level these are the 10 of the best performing industries of this week out of the top 10 industries seven reversed from decline of one week ago showing flip-flop in the market if it was not earnings period we would take that with more caution however this is earnings period and earnings result may often contribute to such flip-flop movements in industries that is normal we don't have to attach extra significance to the flip-flop during earnings times coal and consumable fuels is the best performing industry it went up by a huge percentage more than 20 percentage this week I identified this stock Alliance Resource Partners ARLP it is optimally valued it is in fact the best valued stock among peers pays a hefty dividend yield of 11.7 percentage the stock went up by 9.4 percentage this week after creating a false downside reversal with heavy activity which may point to exertion of BRs. Industry, fundamental and technicals are all supportive 
of the stock going up. ARLP may give a low risk buy opportunity in the coming days. It already had earnings on 30th April, so the earnings related uncertainty is not there anymore. We may take the long trade if the opportunity comes, both using stock as well as option. At this point, let us look at some of the sectors and then the industries using QH and see how we can identify sector and industry rotation instantly using that tool. Every time we open QH, it analyzes 11 sectors and more than 170 industry groups across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over recent periods 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 day. Let's look at the sector panel. For every period it assigns a low score of 1 to the worst performing sector and a high score 11 to the best performing sector. We can now sort the table by clicking on any of the column headers. If we want to change from ascending to descending, we can click again. As we can see, QH also assigns a heat map magenta to the weakest one and cyan to the strongest one. The result is a scorecard and heat map table that instantly tells us which sectors are strong over the primary 5 days period. That is the primary period for deciding trade entry both for swing trading as well as long term investments. We can see Infotech and real estates are strong now and healthcare telecoms are weak. The other sectors are in the middle. It also shows which sectors are transitioning from strength to weakness or weakness to strength. Let's hide the recent periods columns focusing up to 5 days periods we can see real estate was weak earlier and now changing strength over 10 days it is the best performing sector over 5 days it is still one of the best performing sectors let's look at the industry panel we have more than 170 industries analyzed in the industry panel let me hide the one day and two days periods to find the best performing industries of this week we can sort over five days and in this release we can simply double click on the column header the best performing industries come to the top coal and consumable fuels is the best performer ARLP is a stock in this industry we could drill down by clicking the drill button or we could look for stocks in this industry using Q scorecard the offline Q scorecard for saving time let's use that in Q scorecard we cover more than 2000 liquid stocks to identify the stocks of an industry we can filter by that industry instantly from the color coding we can see this stock ARLP is optimally valued it is cyan color both on the primary valuation score and secondary valuation score if we compare the scores with the other stocks in this industry it is immediately clear that it has the best valuation among the peers the valuation scores are the highest it has robust earnings quality and it pays a hefty dividend yield of 11.7%.
how much did it go up in this way we can find that out from the performance panel air lp went up by about 9.5 percent let's have a look at the technical charts of this stock using q systems this is ARLP using at a glance template. In the weekly chart, it tried to go below this watermark support level. And in previous week, created a bullish shape candle with very high activity. This week, the reversal continued. It had even more activity this week the weekly candle shape and color both are very bullish and it could come back above the watermark support line thereby creating a false downside breakout in daily chart it displayed a bullish headwind signal which was breached price tried to go down on this candle price dropped with extreme high activity and in the very next candle price reversed subsequent candle also had extreme high activity the stock had earnings on this day which resulted in a gap up as of friday the stock has closed above the high of the gap candle this may give a low risk entry opportunity on the long side usually we avoid taking swing long trades when price is already near the upper boundary except in cases like this where the stock was in downtrend and this is the first swing up in such cases when the stock makes a recent low and goes up it is expected to hit the upper boundary because price was in downtrend earlier and just now starting to be in uptrend in those cases it is okay to take a long trade swing long trade even if price is near the upper boundary this seems to be a potential long opportunity in a stock which has nice valuation pays a very good dividend and has a gap up after earnings you may keep an eye on this stock it could be a long term opportunity as well as a short term swing trade opportunity coming back to the best performing industries home entertainment software is one of the best performers and this stock chang yu c y o u c u has the best valuation score and is at a support on q weekly as well as daily charts you may look for potential buy opportunity in this stock as well c u already had earnings so earnings related volatility is not there one may look for buy opportunity using stock or option both are possible both coal and consumable fuels and home entertainment software these industries flipped from loss one week ago to gain in this week and we see these two stocks both had earnings in these periods that is why i mentioned that some of the flip flops in the industries may be related to earnings reserves let's use q edge and q scorecards to look at home entertainment software and the stock cu before looking at its technical charts in q edge from the heat map we can instantly see that home entertainment software is very strong over this primary 5 days period the third strongest industry 
let's look at the stocks in this industry using Q scorecard we can filter Q stock scorecard for an industry again instantly using the color coding cyan is strong we can see for both primary and secondary valuation scores CEO is the base stock among this peer group let's look at its technical chart this is CEO using at a glance template in the weekly chart price is nicely supported by memory support line after earnings price tried to go down however this week it went up again there was high activity one week ago and price reversed this week therefore the high activity in the previous week may point to possible exertion of bears in the daily chart price is very nicely supported again by memory support lines price is close to three direction lines cyan magenta and yellow next week if it goes up maybe Monday or Tuesday it will close above the three direction lines that may give us a low risk long trade opportunity you may keep an eye on that and take that only if the industry is also strengthening at the same time by doing that we'll have a trade where industry strength stock strength in terms of fundamentals and technicals all are aligned to this trend from best performing we now move to the worst performing industries these are the 10 worst performing industries of this week worst performing industries drop by similar magnitudes as best performing industries they are in various sectors three of them are in consumer staples however consumer staples as a sector and its industries had been weak for a long time so the best time to short in these industries might have already passed still some of the stocks in consumer staples gave very high profit short opportunities this week one of them is in brewers industry the worst performing of this week Molson Coors Brewing tap dropped by more than 16 percent this week tap had given a go with flow short trade setup on Monday 30th April in daily chart one might enter the bearish trade at that time using short call verticals why short call verticals and not shorting with stock that was because earnings was nearby that trade turned out to be very profitable let's have a look at the technical charts to see how the go with flow short setup could be taken just before earnings this is tap using at a glance template this magenta color candle came on monday this week the stock was already in downtrend it hit the lower boundary earlier and then recovered to value area when it displayed the magenta color candle price was still reasonably away from the lower boundary we could take a shot right at the close of that candle putting stop just above recent high and booking profit at the lower boundary however this was earnings period therefore we would not like to short using stock that would be too risky put options will be very expensive the optimal choice could be taking a very straight using short call verticals that trade would be very profitable as tab drop by a huge margin after earnings is it a time to take more bearish trades in tab no because it has already dropped significantly the stop loss will be far away also if we look at longer term 
chart let's say monthly chart looking at tab using monthly chart backdrop template we can see it broke below this watermark support level if it now reverses and closes above this price level about 64.8 64.9 then it will create a very nice false downside breakout at a level which saw significant support in July of 2015 therefore it would be proper not to take any short trade right now instead look for a false downside breakout and a possible low risk long opportunity the optimal short opportunity had already passed this monday using this magenta flow color candle apparel accessories and luxury goods is one of the worst performing industries this week we highlighted the possible impending weakness in this industry three weeks ago well ahead of others based on industry deceleration at that time this industry decelerated we had cautioned on three stocks at that time for possible top formation these were gco cato and bke all of these three stocks failed to go up since then booking profit or protecting profit based on the 14th april market roundup analysis turned out to be the right decision this is a snapshot from the 14th april market roundup the video is available in youtube channel at that time we saw this industry apparel accessories luxury goods decelerated and by drilling down we had identified gco cato and bke and warned about possible sideways move or decline in these stocks that was in the market roundup of 14th april in the next market roundup of 21st april we had reiterated our view on the three stocks again gco cato it should be cato not kato and bk in that week the industry didn't come in the list of 10 worst performing industries but in q age it was one of the poor performers so we had reiterated our view on these three stocks let's have a look at these three stocks as of today this is gco using at a glance template in this week when price reversed from the weekly memory resistance line and displayed a bearish headwind signal in the weekly chart at that time we had warned of caution since then it is moving sideways in the daily chart it created a false upside breakout and since then slightly declining from the top it already is in downtrend in daily interval because we can see a downtrend line a resistance memory line has already formed we would not like to take any short opportunity right now because price is resting above the yellow direction line however based on the initial discussion of this week a long term long position holder could either book profit or protect profit Let's look at the other two stocks that we identified. CATO using at a glance template, a stock where we had expressed caution based on the bearish headwind signal coming in the daily chart and weekly chart coming to kind of double top. Since then, price is moving sideways.
So far the very shaduin had been able to catch almost the very top. Again there is no short opportunity right now. A long term holder of the stock could protect his profit using Q protection stop order. That stop has not been triggered yet. If the stock continues to go up from here, then the long term holder will have higher profit. Therefore, it is not required to exit the trade right now unless the stock is hit. Where is the stop at this point? We can identify that using Q hop up template protection signal. Let's change to that template. We can see that as the stock is going up in this period the magenta dots these are the stops for long term position has extremely beautifully tracked the stock stops set based on this protection signal was never triggered it has not been triggered as of this friday therefore somebody who might have taken a long trade long time ago maybe around this price level using a false downside breakout in weekly chart can continue to hold at least partial position and let profit run using Q protection signal to set trailing stock. What about the third stock BKE? This is BKE using at a glance template. It displayed a bearish headwind at this point. So far, it has been able to catch the very top. We had expressed caution based on the weekly price coming to the watermark resistance level and two successive weeks of candles with long upper tails. After that, price couldn't go up. At the right edge, it has broken below the memory support line. Again, we don't have any short trade opportunity right now. However, the caution that was expressed three weeks ago was correct decision. A long term holder might have booked profit based on that or at least protected profit using trailing stock. These three stocks show that using industry analysis long ahead of others we can start to be cautious in our long positions and even start to look for potential shots. In these three cases we didn't have any potential short trade however we could start to be cautious on existing long positions. Coming back to the worst performing industries apparel accessories and luxury goods is one consumer discretionary industry this is one of the worst performers later on when we study the decelerating industries we'll see many many retail related industries have decelerated therefore it seems that these three stocks gco cato and bk they are more likely to go down than go up we don't have any short opportunity yet but we may keep an eye on these three stocks as well as other stocks in consumer discretionary sector. Every week we study the accelerating industries. This graph shows the industries whose scores are accelerating. The red bar represents score of one week ago and blue bar represents score of this week. We can see all these 10 industries had gain in score and sharp gains. Those are identified by acceleration in QH. Out of these 10 most accelerating industries, 6 were weak for a long time. You may look for buy opportunities both for long term investment as well as swing trading in these industries. These are home furnishing, electronic equipment instrument and components electronic equipment instruments technology distributors cable and satellite and electronic manufacturing services these six were weak in qh for a long time in 
electronic equipment and instruments i found this stock control for ctrl it is medium valued has short squeeze potential and accelerating earnings growth it gapped up after earnings on friday fourth may you may look for potential long in this stock let's go to qh identify this accelerating industry and drill down to control 4 study its fundamentals and then technicals in qh to study the accelerating industries we sort over base five days column now we can simply double click the most accelerating industries come to the top electronic equipment and instruments is one industry that was weak earlier magenta color score in earlier review periods and now turned cyan and it turned cyan very fast the score improvement was very fast from 23 10 days ago to 123 over this week that showed up as acceleration that is the base 5 days score in cyan color let's look at the stocks in this industry using q stock scorecard again in q scorecard we can filter for the stocks of an industry we can see this stock ctrl is medium valued the valuation scores are in yellow color the earnings growth column show that last three quarterly earnings are having positive earnings bright green color and latest quarterly earnings has significant growth 29 percent one quarter ago to 75 percent growth in this quarter for last three years also earnings growth are positive 31% over 3 years, 47% over 2 years and 41% over 1 year. Significant growth in earnings both over yearly periods as well as quarterly periods. The short squeeze column is displaying in cyan color showing that it has a possible short squeeze. Earnings is on 4th August. Somewhat away we may take a long trade both using options as well as stocks let's look at the stocks technical charts this is ctrl using at a glance template it had declined earlier in the weekly chart then price came to around 21 and this week it went up sharply it has created a false downside breakout and this Friday it had earnings which resulted in a gap up move if price now drops a little bit gives us a higher low and goes up again then we may consider taking a long trade that will most likely be a go with flow long trade opportunity another possibility could be that price moves sideways from here if that happens then we may take a long trade if the high of the gap up day is broken if that breakout opportunity comes then it will come at a point where price will be above all the four direction lines cyan magenta as well as yellow as well as white that may point to a trend change from downtrend to uptrend you may keep an eye on this stock for such a low risk long opportunity Cable and satellite is another industry that was lagging for a long time. I found this stock Liberty Global LBTYA that is optimally valued. It completed a false downside breakout precisely from weekly watermark support level. You could take the long trade on Friday 4th May near market open using Q fine tune chart, real time chart an early range breakout technique you could probably take it even one day earlier than that using the weekly watermark support level that would be very precise long entry very low risk law entry lbtya has earnings on 8 may earnings is not over yet 
so if you are going to take any long trade now or if you took a long trade last week the optimal instrument would probably be using short put vertical not using long stocks at least for swing trading long term investors need to hold stocks across earnings they may take a long stock position in a stock that is fundamentally strong before earnings as well let's look at cable and satellite using QH drill down to its stocks in Q scorecard and look at the technical charts of these stocks when we look at QH it instantly shows that cable and satellite was very weak earlier having one of the worst scores 3, 2 etc now over 5 days it gained strength sharply from score of 10 over 10 days to score of 136 over 5 days it is the second best accelerating industry let's look at the stocks in this industry in Q stock scorecard in Q stock scorecard filter for cable and satellite industry LBTYA is a stock that is optimally valued by the way LBTYA has earnings on 8th May it is displayed here that is nearby therefore taking a long position for swing trading using stock may not be appropriate let's look at its technical charts LBTYA declined significantly in this period that is expected because the industry was one of the worst performers this week it reversed sharply if you check you will see it momentarily went below this watermark support level a level from which the stock had gone up sharply it just broke below that level and immediately reversed if you were keeping an eye on this watermark support long term watermark support level using fine tune real time chart you could take a precise entry around 29.2 that price level that opportunity had come on Thursday Thursday we can see the low was around 28.9 and close was above 30 so this price level 29.2 around that that was breached on Wednesday downward and on Thursday it created the false downside breakup one could take a long trade right at that point the stock on a closing basis completed the false downside breakout on Thursday therefore one could also take a sideways market box long trade at the close of Thursday or at the open of Friday the stock looks strong looking at the weekly chart if it goes up one may consider booking partial profit next one or two days by that time the risk distance would be covered and then if the industry if the stock continues to be strong one may continue to hold the remaining position to see if these memory resistance lines are broken also the white yellow direction lines are broken and if the stock continues to go up if it does go up after earnings then one might be able to catch the very bottom of this stock using the watermark level using the bull release signal in daily chart and using the heavy activity that came on Thursday and Friday you may keep an eye on this stock let's now look at the worst decelerating industries of this way eight of the decelerating industries the most decelerating industries are in consumer discretionary apparel accessories is also an industry in the same sector that is why I mentioned that it is more likely that BKE, GCO, CATO will drop from here than go up because there is weakness 
pervasive weakness in all the retail related consumer discretionary industries it is time to be cautious on long positions in these industries book profit or at least protect profit using stop order these eight consumer discretionary industries that lost score heavily we can see score of one week ago here for department stores 160 and score this week 40 very large drop department stores specialty stores computer electronics retail apparel retail footwear specialty retail household appliances housewares and specialties all these are in consumer discretionary all are related to retail very wide weakness in consumer discretionary sector and may be better to be cautious on long holdings in this industry in specialty stores i found this stock five below five that is overvalued it reversed after displaying bearish headwind at the very top in daily chart you could take a bearish headwind short trade at that time it was meeting all the conditions of the bearish headwind unambiguous checklist that trade turned out to be very profitable right now there is no short opportunity however long term holders of this stock may consider exiting if the stock breaks below the current daily memory support Let's look at decelerating industries in QH, look at specialty stores, drill down to its stocks, find 5, look at 5's fundamentals and then look at the stocks technicals. In QH, to look for the decelerating industries, we sort by paste 5 days column. Now we can simply double click on the header, the stocks with smallest scores base scores come to the top those are the decelerating industries we can see out of the 10 most decelerating industries many are in consumer discretion and if we go down further many more are in consumer discretionary full of consumer discretionary industries that is why the weakness seems to be very pervasive specialty stores is one which was strong earlier now reduced in score sharply let's look at the stocks in this industry in q stock scorecard we can filter for specialty stores because the industry was strong earlier it is expected that some stocks will be overvalued five is one such stock it is overvalued we know that instantly from the magenta color on the valuation columns let's look at the stocks chart this is five using at a glance template five displayed a bearish headwind on this daily candle and that has been able to catch the very top of the stock so far since then price came down it had given a magenta color candle on this day however price was just above the yellow direction line and it was also inside a triangle pattern therefore one might not initiate any short trade at that point if somebody took a long trade maybe somewhere around this point in the weekly chart or somewhere around this point when it broke above the congestion the actual entry could be taken using daily chart if the entry was done at that time and somebody is still holding they have significant profit after the bearish headwind in daily, it is continuing to go down. If these memory support lines in daily are broken, one may exit long term long position. Or one may wait little bit more for this white direction line to be broken also. That is for long term investors. For swing traders, we may have short opportunity before the long term investors bail out. It may come if the stock goes up and reverses again from the vicinity of the watermark resistance. That would give us a box short trade setup. We may not have any go with flow short trade setup right now. Even if magenta color candle comes next week, there are memory support lines nearby 
Therefore, we would not like to take any going through short trade right now. The optimal short opportunity came on this bearish headwind signal day. At that time, in the weekly chart, price came to this level. So price had tried to go up during the week and came back. At that point, you can imagine the shape of the candle was bearish at the close of this day. That allows us to take a short trade using bearish headwind setup and that trade ended up being very profitable. Once again, the bearish headwind signal allowed us to first book profit in swing long trades the last swing long trade before the bearish headwind could be taken on this cyan color candle. That would be a go with flow long trade setup. Partial profit would be booked at upper boundary and then when the bearish headwind trade setup came, one might close the remaining position and take a short trade. Thereby capturing profit both from the swing long trade initiated on this cyan candle and then a swing short trade initiating on this very headwind signal day. Using Q systems and the four trade setups we have, we are therefore able to make profit both in long direction and short direction, both in trend following market, like taking long on this sign candle or in reversing market, like taking short on this very headwind candle. We saw that many of the consumer discretionary industries decelerated. Can you guess which sector industries accelerated heavily this week? If we look at the 10 most accelerating industries, we don't see any pattern. Sometimes we have to look at QH to see what is going on because this graph shows only 10 of the most accelerating industries. Instead, if we look at QH and filter for accelerating industries, we will see one particular sector is accelerating heavily. Any guess what that industry could be? Let's have a look at QH. In QH, to get the accelerating industries, we sort over page 5 days column. Simply double click now. And now, if you look at the sector column, you can see though not so many are there in the top 10 list this is the list of top 10 industries but just below that many many industrials industries are accelerating as you are following the market regularly you know industrials were weak for a long time many stocks declined Daya was not very strong, Daya ETF was not very strong relative to others and we can see from this heat map also several industrials industries were weak, however many of them accelerated now. It is probably good to book profit on any profitable short trades you may be holding in industrials and look for long opportunities. You may drill down to industrials these industries using Q scorecard and look up their technicals using technical charts. Let's come back to the snapshot of the market roundup of 21st April. That is when we had continued our caution on this consumer discretionary apparel retail stocks GCO, Kato and BKE. And at that time we had discussed how one could take a very profitable short trade in Skechers just before earnings. That opportunity had passed by the time we discussed it in the weekly market roundup. However, an opportunity was there in Netflix, an otherwise very strong stock. I had mentioned at that time that Netflix had a very similar technical setup that came in Skechers before its large drop. Let's see how one could or if one could take a profitable short trade on Netflix using the same setup 
that gave a very large profit in Sketchers based on the discussion in the weekly market roundup of 21st April. This is Netflix using at a glance template. I had discussed it in the weekly market roundup just after earnings when it gapped up. And if you remember at that time, all the media discussion was very bullish, telling people probably that it is a good time to buy Netflix. However, I had observed at that time that price came to the watermark resistance where Barry Shedwind had appeared earlier and mentioned that if it gives us a false upside breakout, that may give a profitable swing short opportunity. That opportunity came on this yellow candle when the bear release, the star on top of the candle appeared. There was heavy activity just before the yellow candle, therefore the bulls might be exhausted. And that indeed gave a very profitable swing short trade. One could book profit in the value area or at the ascending yellow direction line. What about at the right edge? Is there any swing trade opportunity in Netflix? Doesn't look like that because it is bounded by memory support at the bottom and watermark resistance at the top. We have a cyan color candle on Friday, however, it is not in a clear uptrend. If it is not in a clear uptrend, we don't try to apply the go with flow long trade setup. And also the weekly candle color is magenta that doesn't allow us to take a go with flow long trade. There is no long setup in Netflix right now, neither is there any short trade opportunity. We could take the short trade using the bear release signal, this yellow candle, and we could be ready for the trade based on the discussion we had in weekly market roundup, trusting the actual market move and not necessarily going with the media reports. We identified several stocks using top-down analysis. Let's try to look for some stocks using bottom-up analysis and I will illustrate how we may start with one stock but after doing peer analysis decide to enter trade in a related stock. We might not know of the related stock upfront. That is the usefulness, yet another usefulness of the Q stocks peer analysis. We have a list of stocks with narrow options. That is a list of stocks which has narrow spread option. I was looking at those stocks in last week and I found this stock GLW. On Friday, this is how the Q sonar dashboard displayed GLW. It was bouncing from memory support, hitting memory support and going up that displayed as green color on the bounce column. The box column shows that GLW hit a watermark support line and went up from there. And the box column is in cyan color showing that the reversal happened at pendulum low. The go with flow column in cyan color meaning that the daily candle flow color has turned cyan, bullish. Does it have a trend following long trade? That we have to check based on whether the stock is already in uptrend or not. That is, if it is already displaying higher high, higher low or not. Without looking at the chart based on the sonar dashboard, bounce, box and go with flow all are bullish. In addition, we have this breakout indicator now. It is showing that GLW broke out of some memory resistance. The direction column shows that the direction is up. Traffic light candle color is bullish. It has a bull release signal that is it was oversold and now the oversold condition went away. A bull release star signal has appeared below the candle. 
and relative performance green shows that it went up more than the broad market. Option percentile is showing that options are not priced high. So one could take a long trade using call option. They will not have to pay through the nose for the premium. It is at pendulum low. That's what is shown by the pendulum column. Instead of looking at GLW technical charts directly, let's carry out a stock peer analysis using Q Vital. This is Q Vital. Using this tool, we can do a stock peer analysis for any stock in any country of the world. We can enter the root stock, in this case GLW, define a peer relationship. We can choose from industry similar industries, sector, country or even global. For US stocks, we have usually many PR stocks for a particular stock, so we can just choose industry. We can click the Get PRs button. It has found 19 PRs of Corning Incorporation belongs to electronic components industry. Clicking the calculator retrieves the fundamental statistics of all the peer stocks. Let's look at GLW and its peer stock VSH. GLW is medium valued shown by yellow color in valuation column whereas VSH is optimally valued. Primary valuation score is in cyan color. If we look at earnings growth, GLW has mixed earnings growth. Over last three yearly periods, we can see earnings is improving, but it is not bright green yet. And over last three quarterly periods, earnings is actually going down. Not a very positive reading of the earnings growth. VSH is showing a different picture. It has earnings growth over last three yearly periods and yearly earnings is accelerating from 15% to 40% to 68% and the quarterly earnings is also accelerating from 56 to 68 to 105 percent. Therefore, when we look at the PR analysis, we see that VSH is actually stronger than GLW both in terms of valuation as well as in terms of earnings growth. What about dividend? VSH pays 1.45% dividend. GLW pays a slightly higher dividend. However, in terms of earnings quality, again, GLW is in magenta color, whereas VSH is in cyan color, showing VSH has better earnings quality. Overall, fundamentally, it's very clear that VSH is stronger than GLW. GLW Corning is a very well-known stock. So people may have that in their stock list that they check for possible trade setups. VSH may not be in that list. However, doing a quick PR analysis, one could identify VSH and then look for their technical charts. Let's look at GLW and VSH through technical charts and see which one is stronger. To do a proper comparison, we look at the two stocks side by side using the same weekly backdrop template first. We see that GLW went below the long term watermark support. In recent weeks, it is displaying bullish shape candles. Earnings was one week ago. After that, price tried to go down but recovered. This week price tried to go down and recover again. However, it is still in downtrend. It couldn't complete a false downside breakout. Whereas VSH came to this memory support level in weekly and very nicely holding on to those support levels. At the right edge, the weekly candle color and shape both are bullish. The weekly chart of VSH is clearly more bullish than GLW, isn't it? Let's look at their hop on charts using daily interval. 
here we are studying the two stocks now using daily intervals GLW and VSH both the stocks are inside triangle patterns in the daily chart at the right edge we have cyan color candle if price goes up next week both of them will create a breakout opportunity on daily chart both of them look similar if we look more carefully we see that VSH is the one which has green color in all the movement indicators acceleration speed momentum whereas for GLW the momentum is not green yet momentum is the indicator that uses activity also in its calculation so using the candle pattern the upper panel both stocks look similar when we look at the movement panel then we see that VSH has more bullishness more bullish pressure that also illustrates the use of the movement panel we don't need to look at it all the time but sometimes when we have multiple opportunities that look similar we may choose one of them based on how the movement indicators are playing out in this example we started with bottom up analysis of the stocks which has narrow spread options we saw GLW gave many bullish signals we saw that from the sonar dashboard we could also identify that by running Q sonar on Q global that runs on meta stock instead of just looking at the stock we carried out a stock peer analysis using Q vital we found VSH that is decisively stronger in terms of fundamentals than GLW and finally we saw VSH is stronger in terms of technicals as well this is how using Q systems we can identify opportunities using a bottom-up approach that covers all the different aspects as well that is technical strength analysis fundamental analysis as well as industry analysis let me summarize using market breadth we saw that both NASDAQ and NYSE recovered from midweek lows however on a closing basis they closed around the same level where price is now for three successive weeks internals improved however that is not reflected fully in the index prices NYSE index in fact dropped that is not showing enough bullishness of the market when we look at the broad market ETFs we saw only QQQ broke out of the triangle pattern on the upper side all the other three broad market ETFs are remaining inside triangle pattern also showing indecisiveness in the market no clear direction when we drill down into the sector level then we in fact see more bearishness eight sectors went down only three went up and the declining sectors went down by much bigger percentages than the ascending sectors that is also not showing bullishness of the market this market is not very friendly for trend following swing traders they will probably get stopped out and will need to go through a lot of anxiety if you are trading only trend following trades it is probably best to take rest for the time being wait for clearer direction in the market at the same time we saw using bottom up or top down analysis we can always find trade opportunities with low risk trades where fundamentals technicals and industry strength weakness are aligned together we could find such stocks in cable and satellite lbt ya we could also find such stocks in few other industries using Q systems we can always find low risk high probability trades in all market situations 
that is all that i wanted to share in today's session thank you for attending have a great weekend and trade profitable